We'll start with the world match play and Michael Van Gerwen winning a third world match play title, first since 2016, backing up his victory in the Premier League earlier this year. What could this latest win mean for MVG going into the rest of 2022? Oh, it can only mean uh, that the world is his oyster again. And it, this is one of his weirder titles that he's had. And maybe that's to be expected because he's become the new handicapper's nightmare, at least last year and part of this year. I don't think we can call him that anymore because there is a little increased predictability in this game. But it's still not fully clicking. But when it does, he's unplayable. And he was unplayable for, well, the second half of the match against Dimitri Vandenberg. He was unplayable for much of that match in the final against Garan Price. But there was also performances where if his opponent showed up, he would have been going out. First round against Adrian Lewis was one of the dullest matches of the event, but Van Guren figured out how to get it done. Joe Cullen also didn't show up, but boy, did MVG, especially in the second half of that match, really up his game. But then against Nathan Aspinall, it looked like he was going to cross the line. He was 15-10 up. Aspinall, okay, he had a big 1-6-4 checkout, but MVG also missed three clear darts at double, and it only took a 1-4-6 out in the 30th leg with uh, Nathan waiting on a triple-to-double combo uh, for him to avoid a tiebreak there. And he was in a world of pain against Dimitri Vandenberg and a world of pain in the final against Garen Price, but upped his game and figured out how to get it done and get over the line, aided, and especially in the final, by the fact that Gessie did fall off in the second half of that match. But what does it mean for him going forward? Well, he's shown that he can win again. And, okay, he did that in the Premier League, had to survive a championship dart in the final, but that was one title. Now he's added a second, and the second consecutive of the big sky majors, uh, the triple crown, if you will. He did it for the first time now in six years that he's won here, and he's done it in what is the second biggest event on the calendar. He's back to being a contender, and one that's not just We know from experience he's a contender, but on what we're seeing right now, a contender in every single event. The consistency is still not there. And if Gurren Price had played like he had every single match up until the final, MVG was not coming back in that match. If Dimitri Vandenberg had just been able to hit a couple more shots late, MVG would have gone out. As I said, in each of the other three matches, if there are well, the first two, if his opponents had shown up and in the quarterfinal, Nathan Aspinall hadn't waited so long <laughs> to get going in that match, it would have been different. But MVG found a way to win and he found a way to lift his game in each and every one of those matches so that even if he wasn't playing a full match at the standard that he would have six years ago, he was at times and at the right times. And that makes him a legitimate contender in every event the rest of the year, even if he's not the favorite. And We'll get to that in a second, I think, because we'll talk about Garen Price. But even if he's not the favorite, he's in that conversation again. Maybe, just maybe, he will be the favorite. Michael, after the final, called it one of the greatest wins of his career. And that's quite a statement when you consider the success that he's had. This title would make him only the second player to have won all seven of the active PDC televised ranking events three times. Phil Taylor, of course, being the other player. But... So there's a a lot of competition for what would be regarded as Michael's best ever wins. But you look at the final, 4-0 down, 9-5 down. He was trailing for a lot of it. And from 13-14 down, we we saw that Michael Van Gogh in surge, which was, you know, a a trademark of his. So he'd reel off four or five legs, take the game away from his opponent. And those five legs that he won, three of them, he had a a ton plus finish, a 130. And then the last two legs, 114-121 to win the title. And... It, it was a strange final and 34 missed doubles in that final. And it looked like he was fighting with himself at times, trying to get the genie out of the bottle, bring out that magic formula where all the parts of his game are working in unison. And we've got to say his scoring power was there, wasn't it? 1580, 1840 plus scores, the five ton plus finishes and some other combination shots in there as well. I think there was like an 81 and 86 and 90 in there as well. So a lot, a lot of his game was, was clicking, but for some of it, the, the doubles really did let him down and he just managed to find that bit of form when he needed it the most in the final. Even the night before the semifinals, the only time he took the lead 
was to go 15 14 up and then win the next two to beat Dimitri Vandenberg in that semi final. And the game with Nathan Aspinall, you mentioned it there, he almost got pegged back into overtime, get to the 1 4 6 to win that game. And you think back to the first round as well against Adrian Lewis, he averaged under 90, and the bookmakers still put him as the favourite. And that raised quite a few eyebrows, I think, given the other performances that we saw in the first round of the tournament. But he's, he's come out on top, not playing at his A game, but you know he's only going to take confidence from doing that and winning a title like the World Match Play title that he's not won for six years after winning the Premier League. Again, that's a title that he's not won for a few years. And after the World Championship, you look in terms of prize money, they are the, the second and third biggest in darts. And he, he's got his hands on both of them. And OK, he's not back to his best at the moment, but he is finding ways to win these big titles. And that's something that we can't really say too much given the, the last two, two and a half years that he's been able to do. But the confidence he'll get from winning these titles is going to make him dangerous. And I think if he can get closer to that form from that almost invincible run that he had, then that's only going to make him harder to beat. So, yeah, another big title in his collection and it's only going to help him push forwards, I think.